everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Wednesday, July 25th. Index is gapped up first thing in the morning, um, right at the opening, and pretty much sold off uh, all day until a little bit of a pop last half hour on a Wall Street Journal article implying that the Federal Reserve was going to be uh, ready and willing to add monetary stimulus at their uh, August 1st FOMC meeting or its September meeting if uh, economic growth does not happen soon. Um, that being said, uh, the Fed is worried about what's happening, and um, I just I think that there's a lot of things that are deteriorating around the Fed and around this market right now. Um, numbers weren't bad. Russell was down one and a quarter percent. S and P and Nasdaq down both about uh, nine tenths of a percent. Um, last two days chart, charts don't look great. They're not really that damaging, uh, technically speaking. We are a lot of the uh, most of the important averages are above the 50-day moving averages, below the 20. Um, but above their 200 day um, ever so slightly so very very concerning um, sentiment is terrible Europe is uh, really starting to uh, uh, to break down Greece is basically in a depression Spain isn't far behind um, Italy is uh, going towards that direction so um, you have a lot of uncertainty everywhere and uh, you know obviously um, lots of uh, traders investors uh, the market doesn't like uncertainty so after the close, we also had some uh, some bad news. Apple, which is a big bellwether, big, big bellwether in um, in the markets, uh, finally uh, came out with their earnings. And uh, what do you know? They missed down 5.6 percent, 34 dollars. Um, not good. Uh, Netflix as well, TRIP down 20 percent. Buffalo Wild Wings down 14 percent. So there's a lot of a lot of uh, negative sentiment out there. Uh, so it's not really. Um, not not a real good thing uh, right now at this moment. Now, um, can we rally? Sure, we can. Uh, we can do. Uh, we can have a little oversold bounce. I don't think the market's oversold yet. I'll show you the indicators that we follow. Pretty uh, pretty uh, um, good indicators, and uh, they're they're uh, pretty much right on. Um, so the markets could sell off a little bit more before we get some sort of a dead cat bounce. Now. Um, I think that uh, down the road, and I'll, we'll get after we get through this uh, uh, this segment, you'll see what I mean as far as um, how, how much we have these characteristics of uh, bearish implications for equities. Uh, we're going into a seasonal uh, seasonal weakness between now and October, which definitely favors a risk off. Uh, gold usually tends to outperform copper, and consumer staples outperform consumer discretionary, and that's not what you want to see. If we again, if we have a real healthy bull market. Right now, we don't have that at this time. So I'm going to roll into the charts, charts and uh, I want to show you what we have here. Usually, our 10-minute chart, I like to start off the segment. And uh, so we did we did get up there right up to that first. That's why I like to wait for that first 15 minutes. Um, really gives you an idea of uh, where we are. And then uh, once once price breaks down below the, o the opening 15-minute print, usually you'll have continuation of selling pretty much all day. And then, of course, we bottomed here, and that was that Wall Street Journal article about the Fed uh, adding more stimulus if um, growth doesn't happen soon. So there we are with, with that little area here. Now, um, futures are actually up a couple of handles. Um, not much, but up a couple of handles. Um, I'd like to see if we rally today. I think that if we rally the next couple of days, um, I think it's going to be create a good shorting opportunity again. I, I I would be leery about shorting down here at this time. Not that the markets can't go um, can't go lower, but then you're talking about you're talking about um, uh, probability of uh, you know what's where we're going to be as far as uh, as far as the markets and uh, taking a little bit more risk down here is not really wise to do. But anyway, let's get into the uh, bar chart momentum index. And as you can see here, we're down at that 98 area, so we're just starting to get a little oversold. But really, we want to get down to this 98, 97, 50. And as you can see, we always had that snap back the next day. So uh, another down day would really do it, I think. Um, and then I want to show you the NIMO, which is our trusty uh, um, uh, McClellan oscillator. We're down to negative 51, negative 70, 80, 90, right in this area here. Would would really start me looking at looking uh, nibble long for a bounce. But um, we still got a little bit more way to go. And I'll show you where our targets are on the charts and the S&P. Um, I want to look at a couple of other indicators, and um, I did mention about the um, NASI. Now, this is the NASDAQ summation index, okay? Um, this is the daily chart. This went on a sell signal a couple, three days ago. Now, this is on a sell signal. Now, I, I would see some further weakness today because of Apple. Uh, be interested to see if this market, if, if, if it can roll back up again, but I don't, th uh, the way this is happening now, um, I, this, this is on a sell signal now, okay? We also had the, um, 
uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange summation index on a weekly chart. I also mentioned that yesterday. That went on a sell signal as of Friday. Okay, uh, and we only want to look at that on a Monday and uh, and, uh, and uh, on a follow on the on, on the weekend. So the next area what I want to show you is the uh, VIX. Now the VIX actually broke down here in this area, and we did get a pop up, and then now we just got our, our, our candle just came right back up, and we took that other candle back out again. So uh, what we're going to see is that we're going to see continuation coming out of this out of this uh, area here. So um, after we we break above here, then this will, this is going to put weakness in equities, and this is something that's concerning with this bullish fall and wedge pattern here. As you can see, um, S and P roll back down again to the uh, to the downside. So um, not not good. What you want to see if you're a bull again. Now let's take a look at that, let's see how China's doing. China's hanging by a thread here, as you can see. We have our um, um, double bottom. Now we did break up a little bit but China actually uh, yesterday uh, rolled back over again so we're back in this area here a loss of this area and a back test and fail uh, then I think China is going to be in real big trouble and I was telling you about China contracting we had uh, uh, China's uh, numbers came out down to 49.5 two nights ago they're still manufacturing is contracting below 50 so not good that's definitely not what you want to see they buy our um, all of our commodities and stockpile of commodities. When they stop buying, that's when you have, you're going to have weakness in the in the um, in this area. Now, copper, same thing. As you can see here, double top failed, and now we're back below this area here. So not not good. Um, all all eyes are pointing lower to the general market between now and October. Uh, but again, nothing goes down. Nothing goes in a straight line down or and or up. So we just need to keep an eye on what's happening. Here's a Russell and the S and P index. I did a line chart here. And um, as you can see, risk clearly is off to the S&P. And here's the S&P daily down here, the line chart as well. So um, we definitely have sentiment uh, fleeing risk and um, looking for uh, um, for safe haven, uh, which would be bonds. And if we take a look at the bonds, I'm going to show you um, daily chart and a weekly chart. And this is what's disturbing here. We broke out of this daily, uh, well, this is the bonds area. I'm sorry, this is the bonds, 30-year bonds. Now we broke out of this area here, and if you could see, since March, April, we've been literally just rising steadily. Now this, people are flocking to bonds for safety, and there is no yield, so that's concerning, right? So if nobody cares about about money, about uh, making money on their money, they're just looking for safety right now. So this is a breakout here. This is really um, not good for equities. Now if you go and look at the uh, weekly chart, and I want to show you, um, well, actually, I want to show you the daily chart of the. Uh, of the um, dollar now here's the dollar as you can see we had bonds breaking out now we have the US dollar breaking out as daily uh, uh, consolidation we had with a bull flag breakout consolidate bull flag breakout consolidate I've been mentioning this to you for the last couple of weeks um, we're breaking out of this area here so this is not good uh, for equities and commodities okay now if we look at the weekly chart this is where we're looking at okay now we broke out of this little uh, pivot area pivotal re area resistance we're breaking out of it now now it doesn't mean that we can't go back down again but a, a little consolidation up in this area for next few days and then take out this 84 high that basically is like a magnet 88 88 and a quarter and if this start to ha this starts to happen clearly risk will be off in equities okay we'll put a lot of pressure on equities and uh, bonds will rise and yields will will uh, start to sell off so this is uh, a real concerning uh, for a bull if you if you are a bull or if you're a long-term investor um, and I mentioned last Thursday to start putting on some hedges so something really to think about guys um, the, you can see here the market does not look healthy and two more little areas then we'll go into the indexes this is the uh, consumer consumer staples versus a consumer discretionary ratio now if it's a good market as you know we want our consumer discretionary stocks to go up retail um, you know uh, um, high-end goods well this is actually starting to rise and this is the staples versus the, the consumer discretionary so again another another implication that risk is clearly off now also we have that um, Russell oh I did show you that Russell chart already um, and then I wanted to show you one more one more thing here and oh I did okay so this is all uh, we went through all of this uh, before now I just want to get into the daily chart here's the S&P daily chart now um, if we if we break down further and we lose this 50-day moving average then the next area is going to be the 200 which is 1314 and if we lose the 1314 it'll be this next pivotal low which will be 1260 1267 ish area so this is our, our, my downside targets right now um, 
we are down three days in a row. We're not quite oversold. We can rally, though. It is possible to rally. But right now, um, overall, in the next couple of weeks, I'm looking at a 1315, 1300, and then 1260, 1267 for downside target number two. Okay, so that's going to be our uh, two target areas uh, once the market does start to roll over. Now, here's the S&P 5, here's the Spiders 500. Um, here's, excuse me. Here's the Spider daily chart. Um, uptrend line now being lost. Uh, we're above the 50, but we're just below the, uh, we're, we're above the 50 and above the 200. And these are going to be the target areas here, right in the same area, 131 and then 126.5, 127 in the Spiders. Next area is the IWMs, and I had mentioned here back last couple of weeks, I said, look at this area, I had these little um, arrows that we couldn't break out. We did break out, but we failed miserably. And look at these gap down. Um, this is really uh, concerning to me, uh, especially when this is really gauges risk sentiment, risk on, risk off, and clearly risk off. We broke the 200 in the IWM. So this is a, a Russell 2000 ETF, not good at all. And uh, this, to me, looks like our next downside target is going to be somewhere around 74, 74 and a half, 75. Uh, clearly rolled over on our indicators. Big distribution day yesterday. So again, uh, not good uh, if you're a bull. Now, the last but not least is our is our diamonds, which is the Dow Jones Industrials, and we have here sitting right on the 200-day moving average, barely. Now today's going to be important. If we can rally today, if we can rally today, and we can put some sort of a a little bit of a bottom here for the next three days. Maybe we can rally for a couple of days and see where we go. Now, uh, I do favor a downside between now and, uh, and sometime early fall. And again, nothing goes straight up. However, um, if the Fed does react to more stimulus, then um, obviously all bets will be off. So the, the Fed will trump the charts. So just really keep that in mind. Um, you can't fight the Fed, guys. I know a lot of people love to be short. And um, really, it's not the time. You you know, you look to be short with our indicators, what what the market tells us. But when the Fed does announce something, uh, and if you are short, I'd cover all shorts and look to get long again. Okay, so we don't want to fight the Fed. We're not. We're looking to to trade the trend. That's the ba that's really what we do is trade the trend, and we want to keep our stops tight. And the last thing we want to do is manage our risk appropriately. Okay. All right, guys, have a great day today. Let's see what happens today. It'll be an interesting day. Um, after Apple reported earnings, and let's see if this market can bounce a little bit. Again, though, I do think that there is a little bit more downside before we want to nibble in short. If we're day trading, obviously a different story, all right? Have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.